Hi, and uh, welcome to a video about how to complete the SVG graphics assignment for the C programming class. I have up on my screen the uh, Visual Studio Code Editor. Now, you can complete this project in Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, other editors if you like. There's nothing magical about using this particular editor. It's just the one I use here. I'm also doing this on a Mac. This project works fine under Windows, probably under Linux, though I haven't tried it. So the principle of C programming, a fundamental principle of C programming, is that the code is portable. It works uh, just with minor modifications across a number of different platforms. So here we're looking at the C code that we're going to compile and then change and recompile. When we run the C program that results from compiling this code, then it will produce HTML as output. So the C program runs and it produces HTML. The HTML just gets spat out. If you're on Windows, it gets spat out in a, one of those black and white command on XE windows. Uh, here in uh, Visual Studio Code, it'll show up at the bottom of the screen where it says terminal. And it doesn't do anything beyond that. All you get is HTML output. No graphics yet. However, if you look at the HTML, we will in a minute, you'll see that embedded in it, it has SVG tags. The SVG tags will tell the browser how to convert that into a graph into graphics. So when that HTML that came from the C pro running the C program gets fed into a browser, then you see the graphics. So the most confusing thing about this project for most people, I think, is not the actual coding. It's visualizing the data flow. The C program creates HTML. The browser reads the HTML. The browser renders the graphics. It's not really terrific to do, but it's a bit difficult to understand. First, let's look at the C code. There's a number of functions I've provided here to draw shapes. And here's one. We're looking at circle. That's the code between here and here. And that, uh, between lines 15 and line 18, all it does is put a special tag in the output HTML file. There's a function to draw a line. There's a function to draw a rectangle. There's a begin function, which basically sets up the HTML that tell the HTML commands that will tell your browser, hey, this is an HTML file. End HTML SVG. That just basically closes off all the open tags. You always need to do that in your HTML. There's a function called get RGB color. That lets you control what color the graphics are. And I'll come back to that in just a moment because there's a trick to that that's a problem on Visual Studio. And we'll go over how to work around that problem. And then there's main. All the code you need to change in this project is in main. So you don't need to change any of these functions up here. In main, you run those functions, always starting with begin HTML, begin HTML SVG and ending with end HTML SVG. And in between, you can put any commands you want from the commands above, like circle, rectangle, line, to draw shapes. When you load the resulting HTML into your browser, you'll see the shapes that were drawn by your program. Now, drawing individual shapes is not a uh, all that entertaining, but if you put in, uh, put a loop, a couple of for loops around some of these drawing commands, and you adjust X and Y, or size, or color, so that you get different effects, you'll get a whole bunch of different shapes on the screen when you render it in the browser. So the purpose of this project is to get you familiar with how using loops in your program can produce a very large amount of interesting output from a very small amount of code. That's the basic idea. Now, if you're using Visual Studio, not Visual Studio Code, not Xcode, this command on line 61, the sprintf, will um, be flagged with a warning or an error. And Visual Studio will not actually generate the correct code for sprintf. sprintf is a version of printf that instead of printing to a file, prints to a string so that you can use that string later on in your program and not have to print it immediately. Visual Studio flags this as an unsafe function. Uh, it says it has security problems. It's not actually unsafe at all when you run it on a local machine. 
So what you have to do in Visual Studio is to do this. Go to Project on the Visual Studio mem uh, menu, select Properties. Under Properties, select Compiler. Under Compiler, there is an option for SDL checks, System Development Lifecycle Checks. Change that to No. Once you do that, Visual Studio will accept your SPRINTF and it will generate the correct code. You must do that if you're using Visual Studio, otherwise your colors won't work. The rest of the program will work, but your colors won't work. Okay, I don't have to do that here because Visual Studio Code, despite the similarity of name, is actually a different editor of different product. Okay, I'm going to run this program in just a moment and we'll look at the output. So first I'm going to compile the program. In my environment, I'm doing this in a very old school way. I'm going to compile this program at the command line. You have a button you can click that will compile the program uh, in CodeBlocks or in Xcode or in Visual Studio, but I'm going to do it this way. I'm actually going to type it on the command line um, and tell use GCC, which is a very common compiler. Now my program is called SVG Creator Demo.c. Yours is called svgcreator.c. There's no other difference. I had to rename this one because I have a bunch of files in my computer already called svgcreator. And I'm going to make sure the output is called svgcreator. This will be the X. On Windows, this is, would be svgcreator.xc. Let's compile it. No errors, no warning. That's good. So we now have a program called svgcreator that when we run it, and this is how you run it on Linux, again, you can launch it directly from your IDE if you're using Windows or Xcode. Okay, I'm going to move this barrier a little, this paint a little bit, so you can see more. And beginning right here with the dot type, this code that I'm currently highlighting is the code that was generated from the program. Uh, the begin SVG HTML, that's what created the doc type. The end SVG HTML is what created all the closing SVG, close body, close HTML tags. And then the middle is a command to draw a circle uh, on a canvas that's 1,000 by 1,000. Um, and the color is going to be uh, a mixture of, it's going to be purple. It's going to be an even mixture of red and blue, which gets you purple. The circle is going to be at 360x, 295y, and it's going to be 100 pixels across. Oh, I'm sorry, the canvas is going to be purple. The circle is going to be some other color. I picked a random color. I'm not sure what color that is. Here's how you go to the next step. So you compile the program. You ran the program. What do I do now? Copy this code. And one way to do it, which I'll show you first, is to put it in a new file. So I'm going to create a new file in the editor, paste this code in, and I'm going to save it with the extension HTML. So I'm going to save it as SVG output .html. You can see Visual Studio Code knows about HTML, so it's going to go ahead and uh, uh, color it for us, syntax color it. If I now go to um, a browser. I'm going to use Firefox and I go to uh, make a new tab, file open, browse to where I put that file which was in my documents directory I think, I click open, there it is. There is a yellow circle, turns out that random color was yellow. There's the purple background. This is 1,000 by 1,000. You can change the size. This is 100 pixels across. So once you get this, now I haven't changed the, the code yet in SVG Creator. I'm just running the code you've downloaded and walking through the process. Now we're going to go back and change the code so we get different output and more interesting output. By the way, another way you can test this if you want your browser doesn't want to open HTML files from your local disk for some reason, you can go to w3schools.com, this URL, and 
select one of their little SVG examples, and in the Try It Yourself block, that's their example, replace their Try It Yourself code with my code and run it and get the output there. So that's just another way to see your output. That's making the W3 school server render it for you rather than making Firefox or Chrome render it for you. Okay, let's change the program, look at the result, and do the whole round trip again. We'll change the program, we'll recompile it, we'll take the HTML, we'll reload it in the browser, and we'll see what we get. So I'm going to make this a little smaller. Now, the part that you need to change is in main. So to make this more interesting, instead of drawing one circle, I'm going to draw a bunch of circles. I'm thinking you can come up with something more creative than this, but let's start simple. Okay. To do a loop, you know you can do this. I'm going to go int. Oh, we already got a row. So I've got a row already up here, I think, x and y. Okay, for uh, x equals... I'll start at maybe 100, x less than 900. I'm just making these numbers up. You can change the numbers any way you want to get the effect that you like. Uh, x plus equals um, 30. So I'm going to move it 30. I'm going to move the center of the circle 30 pixels each time. Okay. There's the loop for x. Inside that, this is a nested loop. A new a loop for y. Uh, we'll start out again at um, we'll start out at 50 and y less than 900 because it's 1,000 by 1,000 currently, and y plus equals 70. And make that a loop. Grab the circle command. Maybe cut it from here. Paste it in here. So as the loop runs, this is going to draw um, a bunch of different circles. I have to, I'm not sure how to count exactly how many circles. So let's try that and see what it looks like. So save that. And assuming I haven't made any typos, that should compile. I'm going to compile it my way down here. You compile it however your IDE likes to compile things. I want to run it here. Whoa, a lot more output. But that's because the loop has created many more circle commands than we had before. So in fact, we're going to have to grab all of these. There's a lot of them. So I'm going to go up here. Maybe I made too many loops. Oh, here we go. Starting here from dot type. That's always a start. Down to here. Copy that. I'm going to reuse my HTML file, so I'm just going to highlight all this stuff here. Paste this in. Save it. I'm going to go to uh, my browser over here. This is the original circle that we drew. I'm going to re let's just reload the file. It's got the same name. Whoa. Okay. It looks it's not very pretty. However, that's a whole lot of circles overlapping one another, right? That's a whole bunch of green circles. Let's see if we can come up with something that looks, uh, looks better than that. So I'm going to go back to the code. Get a little more space to work with here. Um, Let's change the color. Let's get some random colors at least, right? So um, the way to get random colors is right here. Just use RAND modulo 255. That gets you a number between uh, 0 and 254. That um, represents a color number. I'm going to grab that code, put it in here. I'm going to change the color of every circle. I don't need the ints anymore because I already have those variables. So 
So as the loop runs, you're going to get different colors. So this should get a whole bunch of different colored overlapping circles. That's what I predict. Always useful to predict first what you think your program will do. Run the program and see if you predicted it right or not. You may be surprised. Save this. Compile this. Run this. I already see a lot of different numbers, so this sounds good. Go up and get the beginning, which is way up here because we got a lot of iteration here. All right, here's where it begins. Grab that down to here. That last line you see is just a prompt from my terminal, so you don't want that. Put that in here. And then reload the program again. Uh, this better look better. Hmm. Okay, back after a quick edit. I figured out what I did wrong. I forgot to copy. So I changed the code to use the random colors. I used the random colors. And you can see down in this portion down here, um, you can see I got random colors. I don't think I copied before I pasted. So I copy that. Let me just highlight it again and make sure I got it. If you mess up any step in the process, it's not too hard to pick up again, but you, you may get confused, right? What happened? Well, probably you, in this exercise, you forgot to copy and paste. So it's like, so here it comes again. Copy. Go up here. Get rid of all that stuff. Paste this in. Okay, these RGB numbers here, those look like random colors to me. So I'm thinking we're going to get random color circles this time. I hope I'm right. Save this. Okay, SVG output HTML. I'm going to go into the browser again and try reloading it. That's more like it. That's the ooh-ah experience that I hoped we would have the first time, right? So that's a bunch of overlapping random color circles. You can think of lots of other creative things to do here, more creative than what I have. But the principle for how you do it will always be the same. Change the main in the C, in the C program, in SVG Creator.C, to add some loops. You can draw lines and rectangles as well as circles so you're not stuck with circles. Pick some colors or use random colors. Code that in main. Compile that. Make sure there are no errors. Run that program. Get a bunch of HTML output uh, in a window, either in a terminal window at the bottom of Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code or in one of those um, black and white DOS windows that pops up. Copy that HTML. Save it to a file. Then open that file with your browser. Because the browser is what actually knows how to draw the, uh, the colors and draw the shapes. The C doesn't know anything about that. It just generates the HTML containing the SVG, which makes that happen. Try this and post with questions and comments as you have them, and uh, have fun.